All right. So in this part of the tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to take the data that we generated in the previous tutorial and turn it into a bell curve. All right, so we're going to start first and foremost with the grades for our peer mentoring section. Okay, so I'm going to highlight all of these. And I'm going to go up to insert. I'm going to choose chart. Okay, this should bring up a menu hopefully. In this particular instance, um, in Excel 2011 on the Mac, it brings up this charts menu. So I'm going to click here, and in whatever version you're picking uh, or using, you're going to use scatter. So it might be called XY scatter. And I'm going to choose smooth marked scatter, okay, which gives me this particular chart. All right now I'm going to move the chart up the page because every time we do anything with the data in this page, it's going to jump us back up to the top, and I want our chart to be up there so that we don't have to keep going all the way down to the bottom of the page. All right, so real quick, before I add a second chart or anything, I just want to clean up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click here on these grid lines, and I'm going to actually format grid lines and remove them. So I'm going to choose no line. Okay. Now, the problem I have with our current chart is that it's, uh, aside from it being called Series 1, it's composed entirely out of these markers. Even if I enlarge it, you can still see that those markers are there. And I want to remove those markers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that particular data series. I'm going to choose Format Data Series and I'm going to go to first Marker Style. I'm going to choose No Marker. Okay. And that is going to take care of those markers. Now, while we're in here, I want to actually look at some of the axes. Okay, So what I want to do first is I'm going to go over to this axis and I want to remove these values because these are just representations of the frequencies of each and every one of these values that we got on our grades. And we want to you know, just represent the curve itself, but I don't think these numbers are necessarily too terribly important at this juncture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, Format Axis and I'm going to choose scale. I want to set it as a minimum. I don't want auto, I want minimum. Maximum, we can leave at 0 0.035. Um, the rest of these, that's fine. And then the other thing I want to do is for font, if I want to remove all those numbers on the side there, I'm going to choose white as my font, and that will remove the numbers. Okay, so now I've got my axis um, that simply shows measured comparatively between this graph and the other graph we're going to put on. Okay. Now uh, I'll name this series, uh, let's go ahead and we'll right click and we'll go to select data and we're going to call this data uh, peer mentoring group. Okay, I'll click OK. Okay, that's renamed this peer mentoring and it's also brought up a title. I'm going to actually change the title at this point in time. Um, I'm going to put grades of peer mentoring group versus non-peer mentoring group. Okay, all right, so I've got my title, I've got my um, legend here, which I'm going to change up in just a little bit. I've got my initial graph. Now, to add a new graph in here, I'm going to go to select data again, so I right click on the chart area and I click select data. And this is a little tricky. You do not want to change the chart data range right now. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add. It's called Series 2, so this is going to be non-peer mentoring group. And then my x values, I'm going to go over here to the grades for my non-peer mentoring group. I could do it in my peer mentoring groups as well if I want to, but this is closer to my data for my non-peer mentoring, so I'm going to keep with that. I'll click this button to bring back the window again, and then click the one for the Y values. I will select all of those Y values. Okay, there we go. And then I'll open this back up, make sure everything is hunky-dory, and I'll click OK. And you'll notice that I now have two graphs. Okay, now I want to give me more space for these graphs and less space by the legend, so I'm going to grab the legend and I'm going to move it over here to the upper left-hand portion of the graph. 
then I'm going to take my graph area and I'm going to pull it out so that it stretches a little farther and that then gives me more space for my graphs. Okay. Now the last thing I want to do to this before we'll be done is I actually want to add in a line for the mean for each of these so we can compare the means and then also see where the standard deviations technically fall on either side of those. So this part you're going to actually have to trick Excel into giving you a line generated um, on a single point. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to type in mean and um, max ND, which stands for max normal distribution, okay, over here in my cells. I'm going to do the same over here. I promise I'll make sense of this soon. Okay, so this is going to be where we put our data points for the lines that are going to give us those um, upward lines that show us the mean. So for the mean, value for each of these all I'm going to do is hit equals and I'm going to click the cell to the right of our mean PM or in this case equals and click the cell to the right of our mean NPM enter okay there are means now this max ND is going to be the maximum value in our normal distribution column so for PM what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit equals and I'm going to type max open parentheses and then you highlight the entirety of your normal distribution column. Okay, all those numbers and frequencies, highlight those. You're going to close the parentheses and hit enter. Okay, so there I go. And I'll do the same thing one more time. Max, open parentheses, highlight all these. Okay, and then I close parentheses, enter. There are, there's one point and there's the other point. So I'll put this one in first. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm again going to select data. I'm going to choose to add and I'm going to type this as mean of PM. My X value will be my mean. So I'll click this cell. My Y value will be the max value from my normal distribution. Okay. Now you're not going to see anything appear at this point in time, but that's okay, I'll get there in a second. And then I'm going to add another series that's going to be called mean of NPM. For my X value, I again, I'm going to choose the mean for my NPM. For my Y value, the max of the normal distribution, and then I'm simply going to click OK. Okay, so now notice that they've been added first off to our legend, and they don't actually have to be there, so I'm going to delete them from our legend. Okay, and these two points, of course, exist at the tips or the cusp of each of our graphs. So I'm going to click at the cusp, and that brings up my single point, which is going to represent my mean. So I'm going to right-click that, and I'm going to Format Data Series. I'm going to go to Error Bars and choose Y Error Bars, and I'm going to select Minus, and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, format data series, error bars, y error bars, minus, okay. And there we go. We now have our two curves that represent our different class sets of data. We've also got the line that represents the mean going to the tip of each of those graphs, and you can now comparatively look at the data. If I wanted to expand this, I could simply right-click here and go to Format Axis. I can make the axis either larger or smaller, or have it only show within a certain number of numbers if I wanted to. Um, but I think that this, for this tutorial, this is going to suffice. So that's it.